Hi boys and girls. In this video, I'm going to be doing today's religion lesson with you. Now, yesterday we started talking about um, feeling sorry and receiving God's forgiveness. Um, we talked about sin and we learned that um, sin is not every wrong thing that we do. Because sometimes we do wrong things unknowingly. We don't realize it's wrong when we do it. And that's not sin. Sin is when we know that something is wrong and we choose to do it anyway. And we know that when we sin, that separates us from God. It brings us further and further away from him and his love. But we know that God is always willing to forgive. And he's always willing to welcome us back into his loving arms. We just have to be willing to be sorry for what we've done. But simply saying you're sorry is not the ticket to forgiveness. Okay? We can't, um, you know, go up to a friend in the hallway, shove him on the ground, say I'm sorry, and then turn around the next day and shove him on the ground again. Because when we do that and we continue to do those hurtful things and we know that they're wrong, saying we're sorry doesn't mean anything anymore. So I'm sorry is not just words, it's also action. So in order to receive that forgiveness, not only do we have to say that we're sorry and we have to truly feel sorry, but we have to change our actions so that we don't keep doing the things that we're saying we're sorry for. So if you open up your religion book, I am on page 168 in the Blessed Are We book, and at the top it says a forgiveness story. So if you would like to um, follow along with your reading finger as I read, you may. If you just want to look at the screen while I read, you can do that too. If you want to close your eyes and listen, um, but make sure that you're paying attention, okay? It says, Jake played his video game over and over again. His mom told him to stop. She told Jake to do his homework. Jake was angry, and he said something mean to his mom. So she sent him to his room. Jake lay on his bed. He heard his parents talking. He heard his little sisters playing, and he wanted to be with them, but soon Jake fell asleep. When Jake awoke, he saw a sandwich on his table. Next to the sandwich was a note from his mom. Let's think for a minute. What do you think that note said? So he did something really mean to his mom. And he got sent to his room. And then he fell asleep. And when he woke up, there was a sandwich and a note. What could that note have said? Do you think maybe it said, I forgive you? Maybe it said, um, I hope that you don't say mean things like that to me again, but I love you still. I know as a mom, sometimes I have to put my kids in a timeout or I have to send them to their room. And believe it or not, it hurts your mommies and daddies when they have to do those things. But it's what we have to do to teach you. Um, but just like God is always willing to love and forgive you, your moms and dads are always willing to love you and forgive you too. Um, I'll tell you right now, boys and girls, there is nothing in this whole world there's nothing you could do that would ever stop your parents from loving you. And there's nothing in this world that you could do, nothing you could do that would ever stop God from loving you. And when you do hurtful things, sinful things, it doesn't stop your parents' love, but it hurts your relationship with them. And that's why it's important that we ask forgiveness. Okay, it's not to earn back the love of our parents. They're always going to love you. But it's to get their forgiveness so that you can grow closer to them and closer to God. Okay, so on the next page, 169, it says, write the answers on the line. If you hurt someone, what can you say? You could, you could say, I'm sorry, right? Um, I think that's important that we say, I'm sorry. And not just, I'm sorry, but tell them why you're sorry. You know, I'm sorry that I did that. Or I'm sorry that what I did hurt you. I'm sorry that I talked back to you, mom. And then the most important part is, I won't do it again. Or I'll try hard not to do it again. 
So on that line, you can write, I'm sorry, you can write, uh, please forgive me, whatever you would like to write. Um, if you hurt somebody, what you can say, okay? So take a minute and do that now. And if you need to pause the video to take some more time to do it, you can. If not, if you've got it done, awesome, we'll move on. Um, but just take a quick minute and write down what you can say if you hurt someone. All right, and now this next one says, someone is sorry for hurting you. So now you're not the one that did the hurting, someone else did the hurting, but they're telling you, hey, I'm sorry I hurt you. What can you say to them? Now this one's interesting because a lot of times I see in the classroom or you know when I'm watching and observing, somebody will hurt somebody and then they'll say, oh, I'm sorry. And the other person says, that's okay. But I want you to know that it's okay if it's not okay. If somebody hurts my feelings or somebody does something hurtful to me and they say they're sorry, I don't have to tell them it's okay because it's not okay that they hurt me. But I can tell them, I accept your apology. I forgive you. And that's the difference, okay? If somebody comes up to me in the hallway and pushes me down and tells me I don't want to play with you, and then later on they say, hey, I'm sorry I did that. I don't have to tell them, oh, that's okay, because that's not okay. You shouldn't push and you shouldn't tell people you don't want to play. So saying that's okay isn't really the answer. But if I say, I accept your apology, I forgive you, that is how you can respond to someone who's telling you they're sorry for hurting you, okay? So take a minute and write what you would say. And then down here in the box it says, Jake read his mom's note. So after he read this note, which we're assuming said something about, I love you no matter what, I forgive you, I'm not angry with you, it says draw a picture of what you think he did next. So put yourself in Jake's shoes. If you had said something really mean to your mom, you got sent to your room, and then you fell asleep, and you woke up, and there was this nice sandwich and a nice note from your mama, what do you think you would do next? Draw a picture of it there. And then it says, how can we celebrate God's forgiveness? Well, I think we can celebrate it by thanking God, praying and praising him and, and telling him thank you for always loving me no matter how many mistakes I make. On this page, it says, a prayer for God's mercy. At Mass, we tell God we are sorry for our sins. Then we pray for God's mercy. So I will read the leader parts and we can all say the all parts together, okay? Let us bow our heads and think about ways that we have failed to love God and others. For the times we have hurt others, Lord, have mercy. For the times we have not told the truth, Christ, have mercy. For the times we have not said, I'm sorry, Lord, have mercy. Boys and girls, always remember that God loves you. Always remember your moms and dads love you. Always remember that I love you too. You're all going to make mistakes sometimes. We're human beings. God made us that way. It's up to us to choose to do the right thing. And when we do make those mistakes and we do fall short of God's glory, that we make it right. We ask forgiveness. We change our actions. And we try every day to treat people how we want them to treat us. Don't forget when you're done with this video to watch the next video in the Google Classroom today because I'll be going over the religion review so you're prepared for your test tomorrow. Bye, friends.